Hey guys, it's MJ, the student's actuary, and we're going to be talking about subject CT2, chapter 6, which is the issue of shares. Now, we've spoken quite a lot about what shares are, how they're equity in a business, and how you get dividends, which is a share of the profits. What we're going to talk about now is more of the logistics or the mechanics of getting those shares onto a stock exchange and why someone might want to do that. So the idea is that I've started my company, we're selling shoes, I've got a couple of investors who gave me enough capital to buy the factory, to get some um, workers in, and we're doing very well. We're, we're making shoes, we're selling shoes, and the business is growing. When what we decide to do is we decide to go and get a quotation on the stock exchange. And what the quotation on the stock exchange means is that we're going to be taking our company from being a privately owned company and we're going to be offering it to the public. And the reason why we're going to do this is that it's going to be easier for us to raise extra capital. So if I've got an extra 10% of my company that I want to sell, instead of me going and calling up all my friends and saying, hey, do you guys want to invest in this? What I'm doing is I'm listing it on a public stock exchange where millions and millions of investors are looking at these charts and they'll be like, oh, what is this new shoe factory that's come up on the market? Let me investigate it. Oh, wow, I'll be interested. And when it's on the, the stock exchange, the investor doesn't have to cough up the amount for the whole 10%, but they can buy fractional percentages, like just a half a percent or a quarter percent. They can take very smaller amounts which means more people can invest in it and it's more likely to raise your capital. So by going onto a stock exchange, it makes a lot of sense if you want to raise extra capital as it does make it easier for the future issue of capital. But now there are two other main benefits of going on the stock exchange. The one is that it provides an exit route for your existing shareholders. So let's say you had a shareholder, he gave you a whole bunch of money, to make the shoes and all that type of stuff, but he's not that passionate about shoes. He did it because he believed in you, he saw the profitability, and now it's been a couple of years and he wants to realize the return on his investment. If you stayed as a pri private company, he'd have to take his, let's say he has 20%, he'd either have to sell his 20% back to you, and you might not have the liquidity to, do, uh, to make that purchase, or he might have to try to find another investor and it'll be quite a bit of a hassle. But by making it the, the company listed on the stock exchange, like I said, there's millions and millions of potential investors who can now each buy a little bit of that 20% on, say, a daily basis. So on day one, you know, he might sell 10%. On day two, he might sell the other 5%. On day three, he might sell the rest. And what it does is it makes this whole shares in his things marketable. And also, he now knows what the value is because he's letting the market decide. If he just said, okay, I've got 20% of this company, how much is it worth? He'd have to do his own valuation and all this kind of thing. By listing on the stock exchange, the market will be analyzing this company because their accounts will become public and very quickly a price will be determined because if you list your stocks too low, a lot of people are gonna buy the stocks and that's gonna drive the price up. If you put the stocks too high, not enough people are going to buy and the stocks are going to have to come down in price. So what's nice for the investors is that this provides a way for them to exit and it's an easy way to value what that share is worth. Now, what normally happens is, let's say my shoe factory has got this extra 20% that it wants to release on the stock market. So the investors, they're happy, they still want to stay with the company, but I want to just raise this new finance, there's another 20%. And I want to sell each percent at, say, a million dollars. So I want to raise $20 million. I know that it's going to be quite difficult for, for me to raise all that $20 million at, in one go. And the last thing I want is for some shares not to be sold. So what I do is I go to someone known as an issuing house and they will underwrite the deal. So in South Africa, we've got um, a bank such as Investec 
And what they could do is what you do is you say to Investec or these issuing houses or an investment bank, I'm selling all my shares 20% at 20 million. If you underwrite it, that means if not enough people come to buy it, you guys will agree to take up the residual. So if we sell 18%, you guys will complete the transaction by purchasing the other 2%. And the issuing house will agree to do this on one condition, that you then offer those shares at a significant discount, so that if they have to provide the liquidity to complete the share purchase, they can then sell it on the market and make profit very quickly. And yeah, that is um, how issues can be arranged by offering for subscription or by a placing. Now, what I finally want to talk about are things known as a write issue and a script issue. Okay. A write issue and a script issue are very different things. Okay. Companies can raise more money from their existing shareholders by offering them a rights issue. A rights issue reduces the share price and increases both the share capital and reserves of the company. This is something that you don't really want to do. Let's say you, we've got our shoe company and we're making shoes and we decide we need money. Now we don't necessarily have to be on a stock exchange in order to issue a right issue, but you can um, if you're on it or not. The idea is that we go to all our shareholders and we say, listen here guys, we need more money. So what they're saying is that we need each shareholder or for each percent a shareholder has to please contribute another, another million rand. In this way, we can raise then another hundred million. Shareholders don't necessarily like this because it means that the company isn't making enough money um, by itself. It needs help from a liquidity point of view. And shareholders, because they are all contributing, their increase in the company doesn't exist. So they, if I own 10% and then there's this rights issue, I pay the rights issue, I still have 10%. The reason why as a shareholder I'll do it is because I think to myself, if I don't make this rights issue, then my shareholding is either going to decrease and if no one does it, the company's not going to have the money and the factory's going to close down, we're not going to sell any more shoes and all my investment that I've put in has been lost. So it's kind of, for an investor, he kind of thinks, I've invested so much money in this company already. If I give just a little bit more, it can keep it going. Although you can kind of see that there is a dark hole uh, possibility coming, where you put a little bit of money in, the company goes down. You put in a little bit more money in to try to keep the, the company afloat. And this is when investors sometimes have to make that tough decision of saying, no, this business isn't a good idea we're not going to invest the rest of the money, we're going to take the loss as it is. But let's not end the, the talk on such a negative note, so let's talk quickly about something called a script issue. So a company can use a script issue to increase the number of shares in issue without raising any extra finance. A script issue reduces the share price while keeping the total share capital and reserves unchanged. It increases the share capital and reduces the reserves. More basically, what I'm trying to say is that, let's say my shares are trading at 20, 20 rand a share for my share factory. I can then go and issue another or double the amount of shares and reduce the price back down to 10 rand. And the reason for doing this, it doesn't, there's no financial sense to doing it. It's more, this is more where psychology gets involved and behavioral finance t uh, takes a play. But people tend to like shares trading at a certain price range. And also it shows a lot of confidence. It says, well, look, our share has risen so much, we had to do a script issue in order to artificially reduce the price. So what happens from an investor point of view is I might have one, uh, one share at 20 rand. After the script issue, I'll have two shares at 10 Rand each. So I've still got the same amount of shares. Well, no, sorry, I've got double the amount of shares, but I've still got the same percentage overall, and I've still got the same amount of money in the company. 
A final thing that they might uh, do, which does actually add value, is something known as a script dividend. What happens here is instead of paying um, cash in dividends, so saying here's a share of the profit, the company might say, well, here's some more shares. We're going to be releasing more shares and we're going to reward the shareholders by giving them more shares. Some investors might prefer this because they might say, well, this company is going places. I don't have to reinvest my dividend. I'm going to get the compounding growth effect on it. This is great. Other shareholders might say, no, I actually need the liquidity, and so it would have been better for me to get a dividend. What further complicates this whole process is that various different tax laws could mean different tax benefits uh, for the different types of cash flows. You might be taxed more on a cash dividend than a script issue all the other way around, sorry, a script dividend. And yeah, that is, that is chapter six, the, the issue of shares. Feel free to, to comment in the comment section below and ask any questions. And yeah, stay subscribed as we make some more videos on chapter seven. Thanks guys, cheers.